The other thing that you mention in your in your book, that little voice in your head, is this concept of neuroplasticity. I mean, oh, it yes. says it on the back of the book. It says, um, retrain your brain for maximum happiness. This concept that we can retrain our brain physiologically seems like nonsense. You know, I can't change my arm. So I, when someone, you know, asserts that you can f- f- actually you, you, change your brain. You can change your arm. I can change my arm? Of course. What, a tattoo? No, you work out. That's true. When you work out, you're building muscles in your arms. Mm. And that same exact process is exactly what happens inside our brains. And it's called neuroplasticity. The only difference is that you don't see it. You don't see it vis- visibly. You can see your muscles growing because that's the function that they need, you know, they need to grow to perform. But in your brain, what actually happens, again, like computers, it's almost as if you loaded a new uh, piece of software, a new, a new piece of operating system uh, uh, on, on your brain. Literally for every one of us listening, uh, everyone listening to us to, uh, right now, at the end of this conversation, their brain will be wired differently than when it started. Every single instance of anything that you do literally rewires the hardware itself, uh, the neurons that fire together, wire together, okay? So uh, Im- imagine the old days of the switchboard, okay? And, um, you know, uh, Steve wants to call his mom, so you, uh, ra- you know, crank your phone and the operator says, uh, you know, hi, how can I help you? And you say, can you please connect me to that number? And she would literally pa- take a wire and patch you and your mom's f- phones together, okay? After a while, the operator constantly, every time you call, you want to, you ask for your mom. So the operator goes like, why am I even wasting my time on this? Let me just patch that wire to his mom all the time. Okay. So that's exactly what happens in our brains. If you, if you perform a single, a certain function, your brain starts to build networks that make that function easier to perform in the future. If you do it one time, it becomes a little easier. If you do it 20 times, it becomes permanent. Okay, and there are there are tons of studies. Huh? If you if you take a simple task like tapping your finger on the table, okay, and you're requested to do that, say twenty times every hour, after a few days you'll find that you're so much better at tapping your finger on the table, and you can do it much faster, and you can do it consistently, and you can do it in the background. Gamers know that for certain. Okay, the problem with neuroplasticity is, if you tell your brain to wire for tapping your finger, it will. If you tell it to wire for solving complex mathematical equations, it may take a little longer, but it will. If you tell it to wire for hating people, it will become very good at hating. If you tell it to wire for fearing the end of the world because of what the media is telling you, it's gonna become very good at fearing the world. I know some of those people. Um, No, absolutely. And you don't want them in your life. The challenge of our modern world is that we think that this brain is supposed to be there to make us successful. Yeah. Okay. First of all, it's not the primary function of the brain. The primary primary function of the brain is to make you safe. Okay. And then the secondary function that we push hum- as humans to th- th- that brain to do is to invent iPhones and create podcasts and have amazing things. Right. That's a secondary function. But believe it or not, before that secondary function, your your brain is supposed to make you happy, because happy is the ultimate form for you to perform in life. If you're not happy, you're not as effective as you could be at achieving survival. Think about it. Huh? If you're grumpy all the time at work, people don't like you. You're not focused. Uh, no one wants to help you. Uh, you're wasting most of your time, uh, your brain cycles, uh, re- you know, thinking about the negative and so you're not innovative or creative and so on and so forth. It degrades your performance. Hmm? Happy is a better place for you to be at work because it will make your customers want to do business with you. It will make your colleagues want to, uh, you know, to help you out. It will make your boss welcome you in their team and so on and so forth. Mm? We are social animals by definition. Mm? And we want to have that in our life. And the easiest way to connect and to open up and to discover the world is to be in a happy place. That's a primary function of your brain. It's hard for some people, you know, because we can all think of someone in our lives who has um, certain wiring, very stubborn wiring, mm-hmm. that almost seems impossible to unwire. And yeah. I think we all have that ourselves as well, certain wiring in our brains where something happens and our reaction to that thing might be, uh, you know, to catastrophize. It's the end of the world. That's like a certain, it feels like it's a certain set of wiring where trigger and then the, the brain goes through the circuitry and it goes catastrophe, panic. Yeah. 
And, and, the, and the answer to that I found was to actually guide that person or yourself, if that's yourself, to the opposite of your wiring. So if my, if my wiring is to look at everything and see what's wrong with it, I should deliberately force my brain to look for what's right with it. So, uh, you know, I, uh, I, when, I was, when, when I was coming here, it was very busy in the morning. And so I came late, if you remember. And my brain's immediate reaction is, oh, what's going to happen? I'm going to be late for Steve, right? That's the immediate reaction of a brain because something is wrong. So it looks for what's wrong. Hmm? Uh, I could also say, and what is good about that? What is good about being a little late? You know, he's been recording for the last few days, so it may, may give him a little bit of extra time. Do you but, want to know the truth? Mm -hmm. I was so happy you were late because I, I was late. I, right? So mm -hmm. I was doing upstairs reading that. I was reading the book and I was thinking, I just hope he's like 15 minutes late. <laughs> and then you I'm looking at my it, phone. I'm like, I really, oh, like, he's not coming yet. Perfect. So I carried on going and carried on going and carried mm -hmm. on going. And I just finished as you arrived. Yeah. So it's perfect time. You see, that, that, is the truth, huh? That's mm. the truth that your brain tries to deny you from seeing. And interestingly, you can train your brain. So, so basically what you can do is for every thought, for every negative thought that your brain gives you, task it with the task of giving you a positive one. Or two positive ones. Nine, I say. <laughs> Nine. Yeah, because in reality, if you look at life around you, more than 90% of life is okay. For your brain to contribute more than that as negative is not fair. Right? So if, if literally, if your brain says, hey, by the way, this studio is a little warm, hmm? what else is about this studio? My friend Steve is there, the lighting is perfect, the crew is amazing, the, you know, the coffee is, is, is not that bad, you guys get, get, got me honey, I can go on for hours, right? And, and the idea is by training your brain to look for that, what are you actually doing? You're firing the neurons together. Gratitude. So, so, and exactly, your, your, your book basically says it is the answer. Huh? The answer is when you find gratitude, what, what, that gratitude journal that you, keep every, that you kept for years every day, what was it telling you? Hmm? It was training your brain to look for what's right. That your brain, every night that you did it was like, okay, it seems he's gonna be asking to call his mom a lot more often. It seems he's gonna be asking for good things a lot more often. I might as well observe them. I might as well find them. And so, yes, you said some people are impossible to rewire. They're impossible to rewire if they've been practicing a certain wiring for 21 years. It's not going to take 21 seconds to rewire anyone, including me and you. Hmm? It will take 21 days, let's say, for your brain to recognize I need different wiring. And it will take maybe 21 months for your brain to say, and I don't need the old wiring anymore. Okay, and the game here is: Can you actually keep doing that? Can you keep tapping your finger in a way that trains your brain that this is the wiring that you need? Like, can I keep going to the gym and working on my absolute guns? Yeah, believe it or not, a, a, the research will tell you that a big part of being athletic is wiring of your brain, not your muscles. For your brain to be able to say, "I will go even if I feel a little tired," "I will go even if I feel a little." Uh, uh, busy. I will go and I will do the right exercises, even if the last push is a little painful. A lot of people will hear that and go, well, what's the evidence for this? What's the evidence for neuroplasticity? Is there science? Oh, the, there is a ton of science behind neuroplasticity. Any Anything from uh, between neuroplasticity and neurogenesis is, is when, uh, you know, neuroplasticity is to rewire um, the connections between the neurons and neurogenesis is to actually create new, nor new neurons when if you're hit with a ball, for example, and part of your brain is damaged, how we can cre recreate that, right? If you have a stroke and how you cre recreate that. And uh, ample evidence, one of the very famous stories is Matthew Ricard, when we spoke about him in the beginning. Matthew's brain looks different than the average hu uh, human brain. His insula is much bigger in, uh, re in relative comparison. His pr prefrontal cortex is, 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 is bigger and, and it, it fires more often Hmm? It's simply because of the constant neuroplasticity of, I need you to meditate, I need you to stay quiet, I need you. I mean, so, some of, the, of, 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 of Matthew's journeys would last four years in isolation. He and would meditate for four years? Be, be, in, be in isolation in a hermitage for four years, right? right? And, and so at, at that level, your brain starts to do very different things. And by the way, that's not unusual. Huh? Many farmers around the world hmm, live in isolation for a very long time. Believe it or not, you and I, hmm, 
when we when we spend a long time on airplanes, I I chose a long time ago to not watch a lot of stuff on on. You know, I maybe watch one movie, but not the entire trip. The other bits of silence. That's actually a form of uh, of meditation. I uh, you know, I, I, my my absolute f- wonderful friend uh, Jamie Nelson, the photographer. If you know him, he photographs indigenous tribes, and the way he does it is he would go and uh, and spend a few months outside their premises, you know, their village, if you want, in silence, you know, camping out there. He doesn't speak their language. He's just sitting there waiting for them to accept him. And then he would start to, you know, communicate to them in sign language because he doesn't speak their language. And he's one of the wisest people I know. And I and I said, how did you become this wise? He never studied any of those things. And the reality is, is because he's in constant reflection and meditation. He's sitting out there hmm, and he's spending hours and days in reflection and meditation, right? Because you're sitting alone. All of those things are our habits and all of us have the chance to do it. Right? So you you could be on the tube uh, uh, for a commute of 40 minutes a day and you could be in that commute cursing life. And that's a very good 40 minute exercise to work and another 40 minute going back. Or you could be spending the 40 minutes in gratitude. You could be first, for, for, you know, uh, for, um, spending the 40 minutes listening to music could be doing whatever, what you will do for 40 minutes a day will rewire your brain.